Hi, my name is Laurie McGeever, and I'm a registered nurse here at the Sol Mercado Fuller Mental Health Center in downtown Boston. Here at the Fuller, we provide inpatient psychiatric hospitalization, and we use a very holistic approach, meaning we treat the entire individual. We fight the stigma of mental illness at this facility every day. I'm Kimberly Murray, formerly known as Kimberly Wong here, um, and I'm an occupational therapist at the Fuller. So the biggest misconception about mental health um, is probably that it has to look very dramatic. And sometimes it does, sometimes it does look very dramatic, um, but I think a lot of people still kind of have the movie view of what mental health looks like, what mental health services look like. We are moving towards a place where we, we want to be restraint free and we are almost there. Um, we, don't, we don't like to restrain people, we don't want to restrain people. We want to work with people to work out their issues. One of the staff will take the client maybe for a walk around the unit and then the client will go to their own room and de-escalate. So um, restraints is something that we want to be in the past. You know, we're trying to help people. You know, we're working with a lot of people that you know, are completely abandoned by their families, many of them, people that are very underserved, you know, we're trying to do the best we can for them. The ultimate goal is really to help them to reach their fullest potential so they can be as independent as possible in the community. So my name is Vincent Moy. I'm the Director of Rehab Services for the Fuller Mental Health Center. Unfortunately, most of the clients that we have now because of the legal status, they're not able to, um, to come down or be left off the unit, and so they're restricted. So that was a huge issue, um, you know, just being able to have just fresh air. Uh, so this is one of the main reasons why we create this healing garden. We care about the mental health, the physical health, the spiritual health. For example, even getting them in touch with um, nature. But as I proceed to develop this project, I realized that the healing gardens had more potential just providing a place for fresh air. And I envisioned that it was a place to heal. Um, in fact, when I did talk to a patient, uh, her quote was, this is like a place on heaven on earth. That's what she said. My name is Gladstone McLean, and I donate my time towards, you know, getting this garden put together. Um, selecting the plants and also maintaining them. I had a sister who had struggled with mental illness for a while, but after a while it came back to normal and I realized that there are people who are in certain situations for whatever the reason is. We just had to treat them normal, to let them have a normal life as possible because in some instance, some people are affected more and are treated really like prisoners. And um, we believe more or less that um, we need to make their life as comfortable and plants really help to do that. My name is Jason Williams. Jason Peter Williams, and I'm an artist and healer. Vincent in, invited me to be a part of a group at his other job, and a couple of friends and I would go on a volunteer basis to sort of help talk about our own recovery. We started going to those groups just to like help people who were locked up know that there were people who had been in their shoes, in their chair, and we're out now. I brought art to those groups. I gave art to those patients over there. Vincent asked me to donate some of the drawings that are here, which of course I was willing to do. I was hospitalized, a psychiatric hospitalization following a suicide attempt in 1988. 
I, I, did, I didn't think I needed to be in the hospital. <laughs> and they were really sure that I did. But what made being there okay was that I knew that there would be a room to do projects, to do artwork, knowing that I agreed to be locked up, to be detained. Every time I had a chance to, to make something, to draw something in that occupational therapy room, I, I declared that my territory. That's, that's like my place to work out my own healing. You know, I'll do what you people need me to do. And there's another story that's gonna be happening. So every picture that I did while I was in the hospital, I took and I, I put it on the wall in my room. And they weren't always happy with that, but I needed to do that. <laughs> so the, the pictures were telling the story of, of my progress through that hospitalization. What the experience was like in terms of my life was like BC versus AD. There was a very definite turning point or shifting point. Uh, I, I needed to leave behind the way things had been to learn how to go forward from there. There's an individual right now in our facility that several years ago she was so ill and violent that I was literally knocked out of my shoes. Two years later, she hasn't assaulted anyone in over a year. She's getting ready to be leaving our facility, moving into her own apartment, and she's em embraced her recovery. I think that's why I personally do what I do, because it's rewarding to see people be able to move on and recover from illness. I have a mental illness. I'm diagnosed with PTSD and borderline personality disorder. I've been in the system since 13, and I'm 33 years old now. One thing I can say with the full there's a lot of support and a lot of structure. 8.30 in the morning, we have a community meeting. Then around 9.15, we have a group, a scratch group. And 1 o'clock, gym. 2 o'clock, meditation, uh, mental wellness. So there's always things going on during the daytime. So there's always something to do during the daytime. I think the, the people who are homeless has the most severe mental illness problem and they can't get the help that they need. These are homeless people living on the street and they need help too. I'm in the process of uh, transitioning to my own place. They found me a studio in Manapan, so I'm in the process of just transitioning. So, so hopefully soon, in about a couple of months, I'll be living on my own. Hopefully going back to school. I want to get my GED. And probably apply for community, um, community college. Uh, my name is Patrick Kimber uh, from Brewster, Massachusetts. I've been here um, about three months. Yeah, we have all different animals come in from guinea pigs, cats, and dogs. Yeah, I love all kinds of animals. I, I just love freedom for them. Come on. Oh, want to come up? The last time I was here, you know, Jinta really took to him, actually. And likes being around that kind of softer, quieter energy. But having the dog here kind of reminds people of you know what it's like at home where they're going back to and a dog is just having a dog is just relaxing <laughs> you know they're man's best friend and i just want to do i want to give them justice like i'm thinking about starting a brand um uh, actually thinking about building dog houses it's going to be called bull dart i'm really excited so i'll be out there don't forget about me bull dart yeah, I was diagnosed with bipolar, but I was like, do I really have this? Like, I, I still question it today. And uh, I really just got through it by being hospitalized, like, properly. And came here and got my life back on track. 
it's definitely a learning process, the whole thing, and uh, uh, my family's definitely played a major role in helping me out, and that's what I want for everybody to rely on their families and friends and loved ones, and you can definitely get through it no matter how hard it can, sounds like it is. Um, my name is Denise, and I'm a nurse that has worked all over the country, essentially. I worked mostly in patient psych units or outpatient or community psych. I realized that people were treated differently and shouldn't be. And that if I could help in any way to sort of help renormalize people, I, that's what I wanted to do. I think that part of what, you know, when people come out of hospitals, what we do, what I do, is say, this is a part of what you have to manage, but your whole self is over here. And I think if people in here teach Patrick that, that he can go out and do something with what he wants to do. But it's a lot of education, it's a lot of um, helping him realize that this is okay, and helping other people realize it's okay. When they do get better, I mean, they're the most grateful people, I think. And I think, you know, making a difference in people's lives, I think that's, I think that's, a, to me, that's the best gift of anything possible. One of my philosophies is, if it's 18 clients on this unit, and when I leave out that door at 4.30, if one client says, Helen, I can't wait to see you tomorrow, I'm golden. When I'm ready to talk to somebody, there's always there somebody to talk to. And the staff member here are so awesome. Whenever they talk to somebody, to say, can I please talk to you? They'll sit down with me and say, you know, what's wrong? Let's talk. And when they see me in distress, they'll say, you know, what's wrong? Let's talk. They don't judge me, they don't judge me at all, but they listen to me. We've come a long way in psychiatric circles, so to speak. You know, when I first started, we had horrible places, lots of high, very high doses of meds, and now I've seen it sort of have the person take back their own direction in life, their own power. I think just more understanding that people with mental illness are people, and not to be afraid. You know, and everybody has the same hopes and dreams that, that you or I do. And it's not okay to assume that it's, that's not true.